The cloak William had received at his knighting was of Flemish cloth, felted and thrice dyed in woad to deepen the blue, and edged with sable. The garment was designed to cover the wearer from throat to ankle in a splendid semicircular sweep. Brushing his palm over the expertly napped fabric, William's heart was heavy with reluctance, regret, and shame. I will give you fifteen shillings for it, the clothes trader said, cupping his chin and assessing William with crafty eyes. It's worth twice that, William protested. Keep it then, Messiah. The trader shrugged. I've a wife and five children to feed. I cannot afford to give charity. William rubbed the back of his neck. He had no choice but to sell his cloak, because he needed the money to buy another horse. The Sieur de Tancarville had shown no inclination to replace the chestnut. A lord's largesse towards his retainers only went so far, and it was up to the individual knight to account for the rest. William was not at fault for losing a valuable war-horse in battle. His blame lay in his omission to recoup that loss from the men he had defeated. His problem was compounded by the fact that the kings of England and France had made peace, and de Tancarville no longer needed so many knights in his retinue, especially inexperienced ones lacking funds and equipment. "'Being as it's never been worn, and it's a fine garment, I'll give you eighteen. The merchant relented. William's gaze was steel. No less than twenty-five. Then find another buyer. Twenty-two, and that's my final offer. I'm robbing myself blind at that. The trader folded his arms, and William realised they had reached the sticking point. For a moment he nearly walked away, but his need was too great, and although the taste was bitter, he swallowed his pride and agreed to the terms. Leaving the stall, he hefted the pouch of silver. Twenty-two Angevin shillings was nowhere near enough to buy a war-horse. It might just pay for his passage home across the narrow sea, with his light palfrey and pack-beast, but arriving at his family's door in such a penurious state would be tantamount to holding out a begging-bowl. He would rather starve than receive his brother's grudging charity. Forced to a grim decision, he used the coin to buy a solid riding horse from a sergeant's widow, whose husband had been killed in the fight for Drancourt. It was a decent beast, well schooled, and, although a trifle long in the tooth, still had plenty of riding left in it. But it wasn't a destrier. 